Las Vegas Boulevard is the home to impressive hotels featuring shows, neon lights, grand restaurants, as well, of course, as casinos. Only one, though, lets you whip past the Statue of Liberty and zip by the Empire State Building on a ride spanning the New York skyline, leaving you slightly bruised as you return. This is the roller coaster formerly known as the Manhattan Express, now the Big Apple Coaster. The Manhattan Express is one of the longest coasters around. What's really great is it goes over the casino itself and you get to see the whole strip. city in Las Vegas. The great big city is a wondrous town. Made for a girl and boy. New York, New York Hotel and Casino. We'll turn Manhattan into an Isle of Joy. Opening January 3rd. New York, New York Hotel and Casino is located at 3790 Las Vegas Boulevard South. The idea for the hotel's theme came from a former staffer of the White House and the US Ambassador for Iceland. Sig Rogish, along with developer Mark Advent. Rogish took the idea of the resort replicating the New York skyline to Gary Prim, longtime friend and the man in charge of the resorts down in Prim, including Buffalo Bills and Desperado. Together, Rogish and Prim took the concept to Kirk Kerkorian. MGM Grand Inc. owned 18 prime acres across from the company's flagship hotel. Kerkorian liked the idea and the partnership was struck between Prima Donna Resorts and MGM to create the unique resort. Prim assembled a design team and began the challenge of recreating the New York skyline in Nevada. The New York New York Hotel opened on January 3rd, 1997 to a cost of $460 million. The hotel was themed completely to 1940s New York. The idea was to make the casino unique and immediately identifiable as the New York skyline, with each of its towers designed after a different historic building. One third scale replicas of the Empire State, Chrysler Building, the CBS Building, and Blackrock are just a few of the buildings used to give its unique architecture. Not only this, but a 46 meter replica of the Statue of Liberty can be found out the front of the hotel. Not everyone was a fan of the design, with multiple New Yorkers concerned about the hotel's use of the city's landmarks to represent gambling. One owner of a building said that nobody has the right to copy his building, but would look the other way this time because he is a friend of billionaire Kirk Kerkorian. That person was Donald Trump. Many of the sites chosen were publicly owned structures, such as the Brooklyn Bridge. Others were chosen because it would be deemed a waste of public funding to try and sue them for using it. If the New York skyline wasn't enough to stand out against the other mighty hotels in the area, Gary Prim would once again use an idea to draw people in. The same he had used to draw people into Buffalo Bill's Casino. A roller coaster, this time with New York themed yellow taxi cabs that would encircle the resort skyline. And to top it all off, Coney Island has <clears throat> excuse me, also made its appearance in Las Vegas. The central attraction is the roller coaster called the Manhattan Express. It's a four-minute ride that reaches speeds of nearly 70 miles per hour. Now, if you'd like to try your hand at this thrill ride, it opens to the public today at noon. Unlike Desperado, he would not use Arrow to build the coaster, but a Japanese developer, Togo. Togo was founded in 1935, their first attraction being a five-foot mechanical walking elephant. The first coaster constructed was in 1953 in Tokyo. Over the 70s and 80s, they created many coasters throughout Japan. In 1984, they opened their first coaster in the United States, King Cobra at King's Island. The first in the world to be designed from the ground up as a stand-up roller coaster. Several clones would later follow, including Skyrider at Canada's Wonderland. A few years later, one of their most iconic coasters would be created, Bandit, the fastest coaster in the world when it was built. 
a coaster that reached high and took riders on a speedy journey over multiple hills. The inspiration for Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point. Togo's Super Roller Coaster is designed to thrill. Designed for height and speed, the Super Roller Coaster exemplifies Togo's ability to combine the goals and personality of the park with the innovation and engineering experience of Togo. Perhaps the most iconic Togo coaster opened in 1996. Fujiyama at FujiQ Highland, the world's tallest roller coaster at 259 feet, taking the records from the other Gary Prim coaster, Desperado. Or, well, maybe the big one. But let's not go into which one is taller again. Prepare yourself. It's the moment of no return. At velocities faster than humanly possible. With G-forces that'll throw your heart into your throat as you drop 144 feet into it. And fly 67 miles an hour through barrel rolls. Thrill seekers will scream like babies. Go crazy and ride the roller coaster at New York, New York Hotel and Casino. Opening with the hotel to try and attract even more visitors was the unique roller coaster called the Manhattan Express, dubbed as a Coney Island style attraction, even though it really wasn't. This steel coaster featured over 4,600 feet of track, giving it a 2 minute 40 ride time, climbing to a height of over 200 feet and reaching speeds of 67 miles per hour. Built as a steel Heartline coaster, a new type of coaster combining some of the best elements of a hyper coaster together with two inversions. A classic loop and a now unique in North America dive loop, a twist and dive element. This is where the train performs a 180 degree spiral into a half loop maneuver. That's when the center of gravity is right in the middle of your chest. So when you spin, you feel just like a jet pilot flying right through a barrel roll. The Manhattan Express here at New York, New York is one of the best roller coasters in Las Vegas. In fact, probably in the world. Todd Throgmorton should know. He is the author of three books on roller coasters. The ride would exit the New York subway theme station at the back of the hotel and ascend the 203 foot lift hill outside the casino. The drop, however, is only 144 feet. Most of the ride would be located on the top of the casino building reaching 14 stories and offering unique views of the Las Vegas skyline. The ride was estimated to cost $25 million to build. Opening day saw 40 miles per hour winds in Vegas, with nearly all four inches of its yearly rainfall in a two hour span, but it didn't stop people from riding. Each seat of the very first ride was auctioned, with proceeds going to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. The bids totaled $50,000, with David Hasselhoff being one of those bidding $7,000. The ride opened costing $5 per ride, and was immediately popular for guests visiting Las Vegas. Within the first year and a half, it had seen 3.5 million riders. From the start, it had a reputation of being somewhat rough, even uncomfortable. Riders can experience negative g-forces on the coaster, which could lead to bruised shoulders and a sometimes painful experience from the shoulder restraints. While most rides would keep passengers pinned in their seats during inversions, on this one, many passengers bumped around like Legos in a box suddenly turned upside down. Many, many people were not a fan of the new ride. The Manhattan Express was planned with broad appeal, with enough to entice an enthusiast, but not so intense that mum and dad could not ride. This was not really achieved. Roughness and Togo are known to go hand in hand, being a familiar trait of the manufacturer's coasters, some even closing due to these issues. The next few years, the ride was frequently plagued with issues and extended downtime, opening only seven hours per week during the early years. In 1999, MGM Grand acquired Prima Donna Resorts, giving MGM full ownership of the New York, New York along with the three casinos in Prim. They now operated the Manhattan Express, Desperado, and the MGM Grand Adventures theme park across the street. And quickly, we're going to go up to the world first. Heartline twist and dive. 180 degrees and diving back. What a move. Togo went bankrupt in 2001, 
due to a lawsuit by Knott's Berry Farm for their problems with their Windjammer surf racers. That story though is for another episode. The roughness of the Manhattan Express needed to be addressed. With Togo no longer operating, Premier rides were brought in in 2004 to add magnetic brakes to the ride to help with smoother braking. This helped, but did not fix the issue. The roughness was still apparent, but this did not stop tourists from flocking to take a ride. In 2006, Premier produced completely new ride vehicles to help with the roughness of the coaster. Five trains were created, with as many as four operating on the track at busy times. This did help smooth the ride out, but a similar style shoulder restraint still makes the ride a little uncomfortable. With the new trains came a new name for the ride. They dropped the Manhattan Express name and simply marketed it as the roller coaster at New York, New York. Hardcore roller coaster fans are gonna lose their stomach on this ride with three positive G's going through the twist and dive heartline maneuver. The ride remained unchanged throughout the rest of the decade up until 2015, where the name was once again changed, this time to the Big Apple Coaster. It was still not very pleasant to ride, but it could provide some good views of the Vegas Strip. The following major change occurred in February of 2018. Step in and buckle up. Oh, and don't forget your goggles. The roller coaster inside the New York, New York retrofitted with the latest innovation in coaster technology taking riders into a whole nother world. So we can make drops even steeper and uh, taller and faster. The ride will be jumping on the VR bandwagon, partnering with VR Coaster to offer a new experience on a select number of seats within the roller coaster. VR Coaster have worked with many rides around the world, including many at Six Flags Parks. The ride story would follow an escaped alien from a not so secure lab through some of Vegas's most notable landmarks. The footage would be in 4K and 60 frames per second and boasts the longest coaster featuring a VR headset. It was also the first VR layover that would incorporate real world landmarks. Groundbreaking. The passenger trains would feature sensors to make sure all audio and visuals were synced up correctly to stop motion sickness. And the company claims that adrenaline inducing VR will get your blood pumping with its high quality graphics. Hmm. The VR is optional for $20 a ride and without will set you back $15. The hotel claims over 3,000 people each month pay $8 to re-ride the Big Apple, though I'm not sure I believe that one bit. It really does hurt. The Manhattan Express, now known as the Big Apple, is the only remaining Togo created coaster operating in the USA. How long it remains operating will be interesting to see, with its increase in roughness, but with most things in Vegas, as long as it's making money, I'm sure the hotel doesn't care one bit. It's estimated 1 million guests ride the coaster each year, and at that price tag, I can see it sticking around. In 1997, when the ride opened, a visitor to Vegas was asked what he thought of the new ride. His response was that it was just amazing. The authenticity of the resort and the increase of rides in the area made him interested to see the rivalry between Orlando and Las Vegas for attractions. He commented that Orlando was definitely going to lose this competition. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Expedition Theme Park. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to join the expedition. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram for updates on upcoming episodes. Have you ridden the Big Apple Coaster and what did you think? Let me know in the comments below. A special thank you to our patrons for supporting the channel and we will see you next time.